do 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 camera-ception. In this video, I'm gonna show you the lightweight and simple kit that I use to film all of my hiking and backpacking content. Cool! Boom, boom, boom. Can you hear that? How cool is that? I am really lucky to get to work with a professional videography team sometimes. Huge shout out and thank you to Abby and Kyle and Chelsea. But a lot of the time, I am just filming videos completely by myself or with my producer, Rainer. And so if we can use this kit to make good looking YouTube videos, then if you are looking to make your own hiking and backpacking content, this should work great for you. Yeah. What? That camera over there has been uh -huh. used to film your videos. Uh -huh. What are we filming on right now? A potato, obviously. This is my show, gosh darn. Let's start by talking about the camera that we use. So this camera here is the Sony ZV-E1 camera. It's very easy to use, the interface is really friendly to beginners, and the camera itself is actually very lightweight. The lens that we have on here is a 24 to 105 lens. If you wanna zoom in, you can go bam. If you're old enough to remember Dramatic Chipmunk. Dun, 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 dun! <laughs> Now we also have a metal frame on this camera that allows us to attach a bunch of extra stuff to the camera, including things like this handle that we have on the side. The strap that we have on here is actually a Knox strap. This is like the strap that you would buy if you were like, I just built out my 1995 Delica. I like saved some of the leftover fabric that I got at a vintage store. <laughs> The strap that came with this camera was this like really thin, flimsy Sony strap. And so we actually got this one at REI and it is much, much thicker, much more comfortable. <clears throat> Yes. The Sony ZV-E1 is the camera that we use for about 90% of our footage when Rainer and I are filming together, but we also use another camera to supplement that. And that is the GoPro. So we have here. Rainer, filming on my left. So the GoPro is basically our B camera. And this is basically something that I can use if I wanna like really quickly share some thoughts to camera. Big leaves, see? If I want to vlog for a second, if I wanna like film a view I'm seeing, if I wanna do any POV, I can get all of that on the GoPro. The other time that a GoPro is really handy is when we have really inclement weather. If it starts raining really hard, we do have some protection for our camera that I'll show you later in the video. But the GoPro is very, very weather resistant and this thing can be out in basically whatever weather. The temperature's dropped at least 10 degrees, 20 degrees maybe, just all of a sudden it hit hard. There's a couple of things that the GoPro does not do very well at all. The first thing is GoPros do not handle low light well. You cannot see me. So if I'm ever vlogging in my tent, right before I go to sleep, I'll kind of check in with you all and I'll hold the GoPro up. I have to have a headlamp pointed directly at me because the GoPro itself just cannot handle low light at all. The other thing that a GoPro doesn't do very well is handle the cold. There is a super annoying thing that will happen with GoPros. When it gets cold, the batteries, even if they're at like 60%, will just completely die, even if you're in the middle of filming. And the only way to solve this is actually to take the battery out, warm it up, and then put it back in the camera and start filming again. It's very, very annoying. <laughs> Water break. So I have gone through a couple different mounts for the GoPro to find the one that I like the best. And this setup that I have right here is definitely my favorite. So I actually have the GoPro Shorty extender tripod stick right here. This Shorty extends this much. So, oh, oh. oh my gosh, I just learned that. It's very light and it's very small and it makes it super easy for me to film myself. I can hold it out, I can angle the GoPro towards me. It just works really, really well. And then there's also a tripod at the bottom, so this can be set up. It looks like Wally. Wally. It does. And the best thing about it is it's small and it is compact and it is easy to strap this entire contraption, camera and mount, to the shoulder strap of my pack without it getting in the way. So this is that strap. This is basically just like a Velcro thing that wraps around the shoulder strap of my pack. And then the camera itself, that just slides into the mount. So then when this is attached to the shoulder strap of my pack, I have something like this. This is mostly out of the way. I can swing my arms without having any issues. It doesn't create a ton of extra bulk on my strap. And uh, it's a really easy way to access the GoPro. You can skip to your loo through fields of daisies. <laughs> 
It's really cool. It's a great setup. Quick pause, I wanna show you my new favorite way to enjoy Element electrolytes in the morning. Element is the sponsor of this video and they are my favorite electrolyte drink mix. But this is a new recipe for me. So to make this recipe, you need two shots of espresso or four ounces of strong coffee, one cup of warmed milk of your choice, and of course, a packet of Element's caramel chocolate salt. I love Element because it helps me manage migraines and muscle cramping and fatigue when I'm hiking. And the taste test. There is no sugar in Elements packets, but this tastes like a super rich, amazing morning beverage. So if you are looking for a high quality electrolyte to have when you're hiking, as well as something to just enjoy on the daily, make sure you check out Element. You can place an order through the link below, which is drinklmnt.com slash Miranda goes outside. And if you put an order there, you will also get a sample pack of all eight of Elements delicious flavors. Back to the video. The next thing I wanna show you is our audio setup. What we use are these DJI mics. This is what they look like. There's a little clip on the back of it, and then there's a little magnet as well. One of them is currently on my shirt. Tap, tap, tap. The case itself actually charges the microphones. So between the two mics and the case, if it's fully charged, you can get 15 hours of recording before you have to recharge these. Now for us, oftentimes we're not actually recording 15 hours of audio over the course of a one or two day backpacking trip. But when we go on longer trips, we will use a different device called a Zoom recorder. And that essentially has just standard AAA batteries and it records for a lot longer. But for the vast majority of the time when we are recording videos, we are using Using these DJI mics. Wait, can I see that for a second? Yeah, okay. We've been trying to reach you about your car's <laughs> extended warranty. <laughs> So that covers the main three things that I use to film videos. The Sony ZV-E1, the GoPro, and then the DJI to record audio. But now I wanna talk about a couple of very helpful accessories that we carry that make the quality of the video better and also just make it a lot easier. The first thing has to do with cleaning the lens on the camera. So here we have a small microfiber cloth and this fun little thing. <laughs> That's called a rocket pump. I film videos outside, which means that our lens is often getting covered in dust and dirt and water. And so we have to be able to keep that lens super clean. And that means like removing smudges, removing dirt, removing all of that stuff. Plus you can do this. That made me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Next is this little case. This is actually a new addition to our kit. And this is a small rig case that holds SD and micro SD cards. The next accessory that I wanna mention is one that you all ask about all the time. And that is power banks. These are from a brand called Nightcore. I have here a 1000 and a 2000. Try again. 10,000 and 20,000. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. For us, we carry both of these on trail because we can be charging both the GoPro batteries and the camera batteries at the same time. Or if we just need the 20,000 for camera batteries, then we can use the 10,000 for charging our phones or any extra electronics. Let me show you how we store and weatherproof our camera equipment. So this is a waterproof cover for any DSLR camera. This basically is like a little rain jacket for your camera. So the camera goes in here, lens slides into that long section. And then this part that goes around the lens, we will push back until it's just wrapped over the lens hood and then tighten it down with this toggle. So now I have the entire camera encased in waterproof material and access all of the buttons on the camera. I can turn it on. I can adjust everything that I need and see it through this clear plastic. This is far and away the best solution that we have found for waterproofing our camera and still being able to capture content in the rain. And I will say it's super cheap. It's like 15 bucks. Boom, boom, boom. Plus you look like a dork. Whoa, ma'am, I gotta wear my dream jacket. So that is a cover that we use for the Sony ZV-E1, but that's not the only electronic that we need to keep dry when the weather gets bad. This is an Osprey three liter waterproof sack, and we can use this to store accessories, our audio, anything like that can go in this bag, and then it just gets rolled down and buckled closed like that, and then this can be stored anywhere in our pack. We also frequently use bags like this one from Hartford Gear Co. Right now in here, I have a Sony battery, a GoPro battery, and I can even put this little small rig case in here 
and then I have something that will keep all of the batteries dry and easy to access. This is a Weibo waterproof fanny pack. <laughs> This is just like such a fantastic way to be able to store batteries, to store cards, have them very easily accessible. I have my cell phone, my snack, and I also have the little mic pack. This fanny pack is actually super spacious, so let me just show you how much we can actually pack into here. Dyneema bag with our batteries in it, microfiber cloth, rocket pump, DJI mic pack, Nightcore power bank. Boom. So that's essentially all of the accessories that we need to have readily available at a moment's notice. It's truly the Mary Poppins bag. The sun behind you is pretty intense. Should we close the blinds? Great, all right. So the next thing I wanna mention is actually something that I kind of mentioned earlier in the video, and that is this Peak Designs shoulder strap mount that we use to attach the Sony ZV-E1 to a backpack strap. It allows you to really quickly put the camera away and then also remove it and have it like readily available at a moment's notice. But the reason this is so helpful is that if you ever need to put a camera away, like say we're doing a rock scramble and Rainer needs to put the camera down for a second to use a hand, this little attachment just makes it so easy to attach the camera quickly to a shoulder strap on your pack and have it out of the way for a short amount of time. I want soup. I am down to the final piece of gear that I want to share with you. And this is something that I think is particularly important if you are filming content on your own. That is a tripod. So I have here two different tripods. This is the Joby Gorillapod, and this is the one that we used for a very, very long time with the Sony ZV-E1 camera. We just got a new tripod that actually utilizes something that I already carry in my pack, and that is my trekking poles. This little device turns my trekking poles into a very adjustable and stable tripod. Let me show you how it works. So we have three trekking poles, all adjusted to the same height. We're gonna take this, we're gonna slide it on to the ends of the trekking poles. Ta-da! Now, there's one other modification that I have made to that ultralight tripod, and that is actually to attach a special type of mount on top of it that works in conjunction with this Peak Designs Quick Clip. Let me show you. And this goes right like that. Wow. How cool is that? <laughs> okay, now if you're looking at this setup behind me and you're like, okay, but that's three trekking poles, I hike alone, I only have two trekking poles with me, the company that makes that ultralight tripod adapter actually also makes an extendable leg that you can buy that's way lighter than carrying an entire tripod on your own. So you basically have like one leg and then you use your two trekking poles and you create a tripod. Cool, right? I hope this video was helpful for you, whether you are getting started creating your own content on YouTube or if you were just curious about how I film most of my videos. And if you wanna see more about the camera equipment that my crew uses, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you liked this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell, and I will see you outside. Bye. Producer does not equal videographer, by the way. For everyone who's always wondering what Rainer's job actually is on the channel, he basically just makes sure that videos happen. You're like a nanny. I'm like the Mary Poppins. I was gonna go to the Mrs. Doubtfire, but fine. Mrs. Mary Poppins Doubtfire. Mrs. Mary Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs>